Greetings internet, it's Monica and today I am here to talk about my most anticipated books of 2021. I always love filming this book at the beginning of every year because it just makes me so excited for all of the upcoming releases that are coming out. As per usual, I am going to be talking about the first half primarily of 2021 in this video. That's because a large majority of the books that are coming out in the second half of the year haven't been announced yet or don't have set dates yet, so I will do a part two to this later on in the year, probably sometime in like July. But yeah, I am so excited for all of these books and I would also love to hear from you all. What books are you most excited to read this year? Let me know in the comments down below and if you haven't yet, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from me and if you'd like even more content, you can go ahead and follow me over on my Instagram. Before I dive in though, I want to give a big thank you to this video sponsor Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a popular and fast-growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books they love. Here's how it works. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a current selection of new and early release titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Plus, they have a fantastic skip policy where you can skip any month, any time, and you won't be charged. One of the books I'm most excited for is Outlawed by Anna North, and not just because it gives me total Taylor Swift cowboy like me vibes. In it, we follow a gang of queer feminist women in the Wild West, which just sounds fantastic to me. You can learn more about Outlawed and all of January's picks in the link in my description box below. And you could get your first book for just $9.99 with the code NEWBOOKS. Without any further ado, I'm going to dive on and talking about the books that I cannot wait to get my hands on this year. The first one comes out on January 21st, and it is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe, and this is a historical YA fiction novel by the very acclaimed author of Ash, and this one is set in 1950s San Francisco specifically in Chinatown. We follow our main character, Lily Hugh, who has fallen in love with another girl. So this story is really exploring what it means to be queer in the 1950s in America and especially within Chinatown and a specifically Asian community. On top of that, it also explores what it would have been like to live through the Red Scare. Lily's own father is being deported even though he's a U.S. citizen, and so the book sounds like it's just exploring a lot of what it meant to be other in America, especially during this time period when anything other was seen as a threat. On January 31st, A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson comes out, and this is a historical paranormal fiction novel, and it is a sapphic reimagining of Dracula's Brides, which is a topic for a novel that I never thought to want, but now that I think about it, it just sounds amazing. So yeah, I'm really excited for this one, just for that premise alone, but in it we fall Constant Constanta, who was saved from near death and transformed into one of Dracula's brides, and she is extremely devoted and in love with Dracula, and so we watch her kind of like unearth his darkness while also growing closer to her fellow consorts. The writing in this one is supposed to be very dreamy and lyrical, which are two descriptors for writing that make me very excited because I love that kind of writing. So yeah, super hyped for that one. Sounds amazing. Coming out on February 2nd is a project by Courtney Summers, and this is a YA thriller by the author of Sadie. If you're unfamiliar with Sadie, it was this really big YA book that came out like a couple of years ago, and I think one of the reasons why it was so big and one of the reasons why I loved it so much was because of the format that it was written in, so especially the audiobook. So the book was written from two perspectives. We have Sadie's perspective, but then we also have this uh, murder mystery podcast that was created basically following Sadie's journey. And so we're, we're watching both in tandem, sort of the 
actual events happening and then this retelling of the events. And as an audiobook, it was phenomenal because they got like a full cast and they, they fully made the podcast. Like if you listen to it, it sounds like a murder podcast. I think that was a huge reason why I loved that book so much and why it was so impactful. So I am really interested to see sort of without all of that, what I think of Courtney Summers writing. I don't know, we'll see, but this one is about cults. We follow Lo, whose sister joins the Unity Project, and Lo is convinced it's a cult. She's even more alarmed when a man shows up to her work and tells her that the Unity Project kills, killed his son, and so she becomes even more determined to get her sister out. But as she dives deeper and deeper into the Unity Project, she ends up questioning everything about herself, her life, her sister, cults in general. So this one sounds super twisty and interesting, and I'm really intrigued to see like what's actually going on with this cult, or is it a cult? I don't know. So yeah, that one is coming out on February 2nd. Then also coming out on February 2nd is Winter's Orbit, and this is by Everina Maxwell, and this is a sci-fi romance novel. And what put this one on my list was um, the comp titles that were included in the summary. So like two books that were like for fans of, you know, and for this one, they put Ancillary Justice meets Red, White, and Royal Blue, which are two books that I would never have guessed to be comp titles for one book. And it just, that alone has me super intrigued for this one. But basically in this, we have a disreputable prince and a scholarly count who are forced into a political marriage and they have to work together in order to navigate court while also trying to solve a murder mystery in order to try and prevent an interplanetary war. So yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in that one, but I think if that one is done well, it could be just the most fun. So I'm really excited for that. Then on March 2nd, Kazuo Ishiguro's newest book, Clara and the Sun, comes out. And this is a science fiction, literary fiction crossover novel. And Kazuo Ishiguro actually wrote one of my favorite books of all time, which is The Remains of the Day, which actually has no fant fantasy or sci-fi elements in it. But what I love about Ishiguro's writing is that he's able to explore these really complex ideas and worlds and do it in this way where it's so soft or not soft but quiet but impactful and it yeah his writing is just lovely and beautiful so I always love reading new works by him and I'm excited for this one because it is a coming of age story for a robot. In it we follow Clara who day by day watches people as they go about her store and adopt different artificial friends and Clara is also an art artificial friend and eventually she is adopted and the story is is her story and I think it's supposed to explore ideas of like what it means to love or what it means to be human so yeah I'm excited for that one it sounds just really lovely as a story on April 6th Pieces by Helen Oyayemi comes out and this is a fantasy literary fiction crossover novel and I've actually never read anything by Helen Oyayemi before I've always wanted to but I I just haven't, but this one definitely sounds like the one for me because it is set on a magical and whimsical train, and I love anything whimsical, and I love trains. Like, honestly, if anyone has recommendations for books set on trains, please let me know. It is my life's dream to one day take a sleeper car trip somewhere. I don't care where. I just want the experience of sleeping on a train, traveling to places. Sounds amazing. Uh, and this one is set on a sleeper car. We follow Otto and Xavier Shin, who after getting married are gifted a trip on this train, but once they board along with their pet mongoose, because why not? <laughs> once they board, they discover that not all is what it seems. So yeah, this one is supposed to be super whimsical, and I love whimsical, love trains. What more could I want? On April 15th, Sister Song by Lucy Hounsom comes out, and this is a historical fiction or historical fantasy novel, and the setting of this one is what really interested me. It's set in 535 AD, which is fascinating. I don't think I've ever read anything that far back in history, so 
excited for that. It is a reimagining of a folk ballad and it's set in a magical ancient Britain. In it, we follow three siblings. The first is Riva, who is scarred in a horrible fire and fears that she'll never recover. The second is Keen, who battles to be seen as the king's son, even though society sees him as a daughter. And then we have Sign, who is the spoiled youngest girl who just yearns for romance. And this novel is supposed to explore a lot of ideas around gender, family, sibling relationships, and all those things sound really fascinating. And especially to have that explored in like this fantasy element, I think will be really interesting. So yeah, excited for that one. It's also been comped to like for fans of Naomi Novik or Madeleine Miller. So that's exciting. I love Naomi Novik. I feel like a ton of books this year. That's like a big trend I've noticed is that so many books are like for fans of Naomi Novik and Catherine Arden is the other one who I see a lot. Those two authors, just everything. <laughs> They're just all over all the books. On April 20th, Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart comes out and this is a new YA fantasy. Honestly, as soon as I saw this cover, I was sold. I knew I had to have it. It just looked fantastic. But this is a Jamaican-inspired debut fantasy novel. Again, as soon as I heard that, I was like, yes, sign me up. In it, we follow Irea, who is a prisoner, and Jasmine, the queen's daughter. And they are sworn enemies, but we follow them as they create an unlikely alliance in order to get vengeance on a... Uh, enemy that they have in common. And don't we just love those kinds of plots? I know I sure do. Also coming out on April 20th is The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her, and this is a YA mystery in the same vein as June Her's debut novel, The Silence of Bones. I adored The Silence of Bones. It was one of my favorite books of 2020. It was just such a like solid YA mystery novel. Honestly, maybe the best YA mystery novel I've ever read. And this new one is set in 1490s Korea. We follow Hwan Yi, who when she was a little girl, her and her sister went missing and they were discovered unconscious in a forest next to this really gruesome scene, gruesome crime scene. Her family ends up leaving this village in order to escape these memories, but then they get word that 13 more girls have gone missing, so their father goes back in order to help investigate what's going on in this village. However, he ends up vanishing and so Huani ends up taking it upon herself to go and investigate these disappearances. Also on April 20th, These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Overy comes out. This is a another YA fantasy and this one is a queer retelling of a Russian folktale called The Firebird. We follow twin heirs who were separated at a young age one is Isaveta, and she remains at the kingdom in court in order to learn how to be queen. And then we have Asya, who was sent away in order to learn magic to keep all the powers in balance. However, their mother ends up being murdered, and so Asya returns to court, and the two have to kind of refine their balance is what I'm sort of getting from the synopsis and figure out what who killed their mother and what happened. Um, this is also supposed to have an enemies or sapphic enemies to lovers plotline in it, so really excited for that. And then Isaveta and Asya are supposed to kind of have like Sansa Arya vibes, so also very excited for that. Even though I actually really don't like Game of Thrones. Then also on April 20th, everything's coming out on April 20th, that's gonna be a big day for me. <laughs> Um, also on April 20th is In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens, and this is a YA historical fantasy novel. F.T. Lukens actually wrote a book that I read back in 2019 that I really loved called The Rules and Regulations for Mediating Myths, which is sort of like if Becky Albertalli or Casey McQuiston wrote Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, it's so good. Such a fun time. But it was like an indie book, so I never really saw it get much buzz anywhere on the book internet. But yeah, I really enjoyed that one, so I'm so excited for this new book. In this one, we follow Prince Tal, and Prince Tal has basically been sequestered in his castle his whole life because his family doesn't want it getting out that he has magical powers, but he's finally going on his big first adventure. However, two days into that adventure, 
his crew ends up discovering this abandoned ship and on this ship is a prisoner, a mysterious prisoner, and Prince Tal is set with the task of guarding him and he sort of has these immediate feelings for this prisoner whose name is Eth Athlin, by the way. So he ends up having immediate feelings for Athlin and then when he looks away for a moment, Athlin jumps off ship and Tal is sort of just in despair because there's no way that Athlan could have survived that jump. However, a few days later, who does he run into at a port city? None other than Athlan. And so this one is supposed to be a swoony romance featuring pirates and magic. The cover looks fantastic. So that's it for April 20th. Now moving on to May 4th, we have The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He, and this is a YA sci-fi. And there honestly isn't a lot of info about this book online, which I think is purposeful and a good thing because this one is billed as we were liars with sci-fi scope and lost with a satisfying resolution. I love that little dig at lost <laughs> in that blurb. In this one we follow two sisters, one who wants to escape her life and the other who finds herself mysteriously on an abandoned island or deserted island. But yeah, this one definitely sounds like one of those books that you really don't want to know anything about going into because it's such like a like shrouded in mystery kind of novel. So I am going to try and not learn much more about it than that. But also I just need to talk about this cover. <laughs> it's beautiful. I think it might be my favorite cover of 2021 so far. I just... It's so stunning. Then coming out on March 9th is The Bone Maker by Sarah Dent Durst. Leading up to this novel, five heroes risked their lives in order to take down this evil magician who was building an inhuman army from animal bones. And one of them ends up paying the ultimate sacrifice and actually dies. But this novel takes place 25 years into the future where we follow the five warriors, one broken, one gone soft, one pursuing a simple life, one stuck in the past, and one who should be dead. Their story should have been finished, but evil doesn't stop just because someone said the end. So yeah, that sounds so good. I'm there's a lot of reasons why I'm excited for this one. One, it gives me total Zodiac Star Force vibes. I don't know if you've read that, but it's one of my favorite comic series. Except Zodiac Star Force is still set in high school, but similar with the whole like saving the day one day and then years later kind of having to get the team back together. So I definitely am excited about that because I love Zodiac Star Force, but I'm also really excited for this one because I love that our protagonists are older in age. I feel like it's rare, or maybe it's just because I haven't sought out these books, but I at least have not read very many, if any, fantasy stories featuring women who are more mature in age, and I would love to read more. So if you have any recommendations, feel free to give me some in the comments down below. I also love anything that explores sort of after the happily ever after, after the end, like what it's like to be a hero afterwards. So also very excited about that part of the book. Hopefully that one lives up to my hopes for it. And then on May 11th, we have A Special Place for Women by Laura Hankin. This is a contemporary fiction novel, sounds a little bit thrillery. And this one I am excited for, for a bit of personal reasons. Uh, so I'm going to read a little bit of the blurb. So it says, it's a club like no other. Only the most important women receive an invitation. But one daring young reporter is about to infiltrate this female-run secret society whose beguiling members are caught up in a dark and treacherous business. So back in like 2018, I think, I joined a, not a secret society, <laughs> I joined a uh, co-working space slash social group called The Wing, which started off in New York City as like one location. And then by the time my membership ended, had like tons of locations throughout Manhattan and Brooklyn, and then had expanded to London, Chicago, and LA. And that is what this book is inspired by, like 100%. It doesn't say it anywhere, but it's very obvious in the way that the synopsis is written, like the longer synopsis, and then also in this cover, which literally looks like The Wing. <laughs> so like The Wing is like an, a women's only space, and um, it's very, very aesthetic, very pink, 
everything smelled nice <laughs> and I although first of all the only way that I was able to afford it was because my job at the time was willing to pay for me to have an office space somewhere because I was our only team member in New York at the time so that's how I afforded that. I would not have been able to pay for it myself otherwise. And I also have friends who worked at the wing and internally it was a bit of a disaster. You can, if you Google the wing, there's like lots of articles about it too. The CEO was basically ousted. There were a lot of like internal issues of like microaggressions and just like bad treatment of employees in general. But yeah, as soon as I saw this, saw what it was about, I knew I had to read it purely for like personal reasons because I just want to see how this author depicts the wing and if they get it right. But regardless, I'm excited for it because it's a secret society in New York City, which I'm excited for. Then on May 18th, In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland comes out, and this one follows a pansexual blood mage who reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit in order to start a rebellion amongst the living and the dead. And as soon as I saw that this one had a pan man main character, I knew this had to be on my list. That's really hard to find, and I feel like we're getting more and more books recently, but I always want more. <laughs> so I was really excited for that. Um, but this book also features a lesbian love interest, an asexual, non binary major supporting character, multiple female female relationships, and a polyamorous male female female relationship. So that's amazing. Very excited. Coming out also on May 18th is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and this is a historical fiction novel set in the 1980s. And Taylor Jenkins Reid, you obviously probably know her name. She is the author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Dizzy Jones and the Six, which are some of like BookTube's favorite books. I really liked Evelyn Hugo. I did not like Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm really excited for both both adaptations though. But yeah, this one is set in the 1980s and we follow four famous celebrity siblings and one of them is throwing this like huge party. It's an annual thing that everyone is really excited for and that's all I really know. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I hope I like it. I hope I like it in the way that I liked Evelyn Hugo instead of disliking it in the way that I disliked Daisy Jones and the Six. On June 1st, The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nye Vo comes out, and this is a historical fiction. It's a great Gatsby retelling featuring a queer Asian protagonist. Sounds amazing. I feel like we're going to start seeing a lot of great Gatsby retellings now because The Great Gatsby is, is now officially in the public domain, which means people can play with that story however they would like, which is really exciting. It's a coming of age story full of magic, mystery, and glittering excess. We follow Jordan Baker, who has grown up in sort of the elite of American circles in the 1920s. However, she's also queer and Asian and adopted, so she's often seen as like this exotic creature by her peers. So even though she is at the top of society, there are still all of these doors that are closed to her because of those things. So yeah, that one sounds fantastic. And then on June 8th, The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri comes out, and this is a new fantasy novel. According to the author, this one is an epic Indian-influenced fantasy novel about vengeful, morally gray lesbian who want to set an empire ablaze. This is the start to a new fantasy trilogy and we follow a captive princess and a handmaiden with secret magical abilities who come together to try and take down the princess's traitor of a brother. And yeah, I feel like there's a lot of books on my list of like two people come together to take a enemy down, um, which I mean to be fair is like I feel like a very common fantasy or fiction trope in general, uh, but yeah that one just sounds super magical and I'm also just really excited about the setting. Moving on, also coming out on June 8th is The Wolf and the Woodsman. This is by Ava Reed and this one is a debut novel that's inspired by Hungarian history and Jewish mythology and I have never read a book about either of those things or featuring either of those things. So that's what really drew me to this one. It's a YA historical fantasy and we follow a young pagan woman and a woodsman who also 
form an unlikely alliance to thwart a tyrant. So yes, going along with that trope again, but this one is supposed to be great for fans of Naomi Novik and the Bear and the Nightingale, which again is another trend that I am definitely seeing in 2021. We are coming to the end. I have two more books to talk about. The penultimate one is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, and this is by India Holton, and it comes out on June 15th. It's a historical romance novel that's also supposed to have a lot of like fantastical elements. I love the idea of that. And in this one, we follow Cecilia Bassingwaite, who is on the surface, like the ideal Victorian woman. She's very prim and proper. However, she's also secretly part of a sorority, a crime sorority, which I love the idea of a crime sorority. Sounds great. And so her, along with the other members of this crime sorority, fly around London drinking tea and blackmailing friends and acquiring treasure by interesting means. So follows her. And then we have Ned Lightborn, who as soon as he sets eyes on Cecilia is smitten. However, this is an issue because he is also meant to kill her because he is hired by this man who hates like women who have agency. And so yeah, this book is about them. And honestly, it just sounds like a fun time, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's not a really boring, dull time. And then the last book in my 21 most anticipated books of 2021 is She Who Became the Sun, and this is by Shelley Parker Chan. This one comes out on July 20th, and it is a historical fantasy. And as soon as I saw the synopsis for this one. I was just, I need it. I needed it in my life. It is supposed to be Mulan meets the Song of Achilles, and it is a bold, queer, and lyrical reimagining of the rise of the founding emperor of the Ming dynasty. So yeah, sounds like nothing else. It just sounds so good. I There are so many books in this list that I'm just like, where has this been my whole life? And this is one of them. So yeah, I'm really hyped for that one. Really hyped for all of these books. Um, if you know me though, if you have, you know, watched my videos frequently, you might think that there are two books missing from this and they are Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo and Anyway the Wind Blows by uh, Rainbow Rowell. And I'm so excited for those two books. Like, oh my gosh, so excited. But I wanted to keep this list to like first books in series or like just standalone novels. So that's why they're not on here, but I am very excited for them. But yeah, that is my whole list. Those are the 21 books I'm most excited that are coming out in the first half of this year. I, again, would love to hear what books you're excited for. Let me know in the comments down below or let me know what books from the ones that I mentioned you're most interested in checking out for yourself or that you'd like me to check out, and I will talk to y'all next time. Bye!